I've been feeling kind of nostalgic recently, and I actually fired up Arkham Origins. It's the third game in the Arkham series between City and Night, which were kind of the main entries made by Rocksteady, who created the series. But there was Arkham Origins in there. It was kind of a spin-off. It was by another team. It was a prequel. It had different voice actors. It just felt a little bit cheap at the time. I think 2013, I wrote it off as just being kind of a cash grab. I thought, who cares about that? It seems like a copy and paste, a retread of City. I don't need to play it. I'll wait for Arkham Knight, which is the proper new entry, which eventually came out. Well, now I'm kind of missing the series. I'm missing the Arkham games because we haven't had one for such a long time. And I went back to Arkham Origins and I was kind of shocked because I thought I'm actually enjoying this. It's pretty solid and it makes Suicide Squad look like a total joke. And that's the sad state that we're at, that a game like Arkham Origins that was really a cash grab, at least in terms of the motivation for making it, couple of years it took to make it very rushed development. It's still way better than a game like Suicide Squad, which took like 10 years to make. Suicide Squad was meant to be the huge big follow-up to the Arkham series. It was going to have the huge budget. You even had Kevin Conroy back as Batman. And what did we really get? We got a, a trashy live service. It felt like in making the game that they probably had to stop and restart a million times. This happens with all these live service games. They finally release and there's like no content because they've spent so much time probably butting heads with each other, butting heads with executives about monetization. All the things that we, the player, don't care about. We just want a good game, but the, the developers just piss around, piss away money, because they just don't spend that time actually making the game. You've got these huge bloated development teams. Half the people who work there, they're not worried about how can we make a Suicide Squad that's fun. They're thinking about how can we shoehorn in political messaging? How can we use this as an opportunity to educate people? Then you've got the finance money people who are only thinking about how can we extract as many dollars as possible from our players. Who's responsible for the creative element? Just making something that's fun, that's enjoyable, that makes people want to play it. They seem to have disappeared. There's no more time for those people. And I, I thought I would never talk about Suicide Squad again. It's dead, it's buried. But just seeing something today, it perfectly sums up what went wrong with Suicide Squad and where we just kind of are today in entertainment in general in 2024. And we can see here Rocksteady reveals Suicide Squad killed the Justice League's Mrs. Freeze is a lesbian named Victoria Fries. Now this actually reads like a parody. I didn't read this and, and get angry upset. There was a time where I probably would have. Like, after Arkham Knight, I was expecting great things from Rocksteady. Now I just don't care. Rocksteady are literally dead. And I've got to say, reading this title, it would be like, I doubt this is allowed because all these AI contraptions are politically motivated, but it, it just feels like if I put into chat GBT, give me the most on-the-nose example of gaming in 2024, because this genuinely feels like a joke, and I mean, I could wade through, I mean, who is Mrs. Freeze? What is the law behind this exciting character? And to be honest, I got about 20 words in, I stopped caring, because no one cares about Suicide Squad. The fact that it even has a, a season two, and they're up to season two. I mean, that just feels weird. Just shut this down. I, I know that these different companies, they're scared because people already have no faith in live service games. And even when they get a bomb like this, they want to pretend like, even if it's a failure, they want to pretend they're always going to have that commitment to give you all of the content. They're not going to shut it down prematurely. Don't be scared when the next live service comes out. Support it, because even if it bombs like this, they'll continue to deliver you content. You'll never get let down. That's not true. A lot of this content was probably already made, and they're going to quietly put the game in maintenance mode, which is another way of saying it'll technically be alive, but it won't actually be receiving any new meaningful content. That used to happen to a lot of MMOs back in the day. There's MMOs that haven't got content in years, but they're not really dead. They're not technically dead, if that makes sense. But Suicide Squad absolutely is dead. And I've got to say, credit to Rocksteady, at least they're making it so bad that I don't feel like I'm missing out on the story. Because one thing with this live service and it being a follow-up to Arkham, 
It was like, if you enjoyed all of those Batman games, are you now going to miss kind of the conclusion? What comes next in the story? What's Batman doing? What are the villains up to? The story is so unbelievably bad that we don't feel like we have to force ourselves through the game, the live service gameplay loop microtransactions being shoved in your face. You can skip all of that because Mr. Freeze is now basically a Twitter lesbian cosplayer. We can safely ignore this. It's, it's nice of Rocksteady to do this for us. And even looking at the player numbers, the actual people who are going to suffer through this, you're looking at a couple of hundred. Fortunately, not that many people are going to be disappointed because no one's playing Despite having an all-time peak of 14,000 people, which is more than it ever deserved, there's now at most 300 people actually playing the game. And again, that's how you know the content was already made. If it hadn't been made, 300 people, they would have turned the lights off months ago. But at the end of the day, this is what happens. And it just gets me back to thinking about Arkham Origins and how a game with a much lower budget, inexperienced team how back in probably 2011 to 2013, that development cycle, how they were able to make something that was still much, much better than Suicide Squad. And it really comes down to just the cultural rot of the studio, it feels like. like when a development team thinks that this Mrs. Freeze is a good idea, that's when you just know that, that anyone sensible, anyone with a, a working brain who is capable of making something that the average player is going to enjoy, they're gone. The people who've replaced them, I wouldn't wish them on any company. And we can kind of see it in, for instance, Sweet Baby Inc. And we look at their clients. Rocksteady are obviously one of the clients. We've known that for a long time. But if you just think about it, it's, it's not that... Sweet Baby Inc. went in and ruined Rocksteady, and that's why the game is the way it is. That's actually not it. You look at all of these different studios or companies on this list, most of them have declined, and it is that cultural rot. It's that a studio like Rocksteady has spent so long in decline, hiring clowns, hiring people not based on merit and what they can actually contribute to video games, to the team. It's hiring people based on probably... Hair color, is it light blue, is it purple, color of skin, political affiliations, all of that sort of stuff, and that's how we land here. This list of Sweet Baby Ink clients, it tells you what studios have just hit rock bottom that they're willing to spend money on this clown world consultancy. When you're doing that, that you really know that you've hit rock bottom, and that's where Rocksteady is. I can't say that I want them to survive because... If there is anyone competent who still works there, I'd prefer they're at least forced to go and work somewhere else. Maybe that's the positive that can come out of Rocksteady getting shuttered, but I believe they've been trying to pitch a new single-player game, and there'll be some copers who think, good, get them away from this live service, back to what they do best. They don't do anything best anymore. The people who work there, it is not the same team that made Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and so on. It's gone. The dream is over. The studio is now corrupted. It's full of morons. They're not capable of producing anything of quality. And that kind of goes across the board. It seems like Warner Brothers games in general, they do not know what they're doing. All the way from the top down, they don't know what they're doing. Because the Wonder Woman game is apparently meant to be coming from the developers of Shadow of War, Shadow of Mortal. That's now been going on for like seven, eight years. And there was a rumor the other day that they're still trying to decide on a story. So it's not even close. It's going to be another decade plus. And you can just see another bomb coming from a mile away where it's, let's make yet another game. We're using an existing property. We take forever to make it. Even though it's meant to be single player, we somehow shove in microtransactions and all of that. It's sounding like another disaster. Hogwarts Legacy, that was Warner Brothers. That was kind of decent for what it is. But now they're turning that series into a live service as well. So it's all just seemingly going wrong for Warner Brothers. I do want to end on a positive note because, again, going back to Arkham Origins, it got me thinking just about, say, open world games of this style. Because even though Arkham City, Arkham Knight, and so on Origins, they are technically open world, they feel a little bit different. It's why I've always liked them. They feel different to just a lot of the copy and pasty bloated open world games that we get these days. I really like that it's smaller in scale, but the content usually feels more meaningful. For instance, the collectibles around the map 
In a lot of games, that just feels like little dopamine hits. You just follow the arrow, you go and get the next collectible, and you continue on. And that's literally it. It feels brainless. These days, it feels like it's hard to do that without having something on, like, the second monitor, for instance, watching a, a movie or something. And I don't like that. I'd prefer that the game was totally engaging me. The Arkham games kind of do that because the collectibles, usually it's Riddler trophies, they at least have a little puzzle associated with it. I've really liked that. Sometimes the the puzzles, some are better than others, but overall it's a good idea. It makes the collectibles feel a bit more meaningful. I also like that after collecting a certain number, you get sort of a story mission associated with it. So it doesn't feel totally like busy work. You're at least rewarded with some actual story-based content that has a bit more meat to it. So that's kind of cool as well. I don't feel that in a lot of the open world games that have pointless collectibles scattered everywhere. So I see that open world design is a bit of a win not too big and what you do in the open world feels pretty good outside of that the combat has always been fun the story itself usually quite mature doesn't feel as dumbed down as a lot of other games and i just wanted to reminisce because when i go back again to 2013 when i wrote off arkham origins as a cheap cash grab it feels like something like that gamers would be pretty grateful for these days because it seems like we get way less games they take way longer, and so many of them are, are actual disasters. They're not just sort of average quality 8 out of 10s. Some of them are just total abysmal disasters that shutter studios. How can you make a game over 10 years and then it doesn't succeed and you keep the lights on? That doesn't seem feasible. If any other company works for 10 years, does nothing, makes no money, it doesn't work out, they're almost always gone. So it's going to be no different for the game industry. They have to, something has to be figured out. You have to get these idiots out of development roles. I mean, we did see, I think, Microsoft were firing their DEI department or something like that. I don't get my hopes up with those things. I mean, they might rename it to something else. They might bring something similar back in a couple of years. I don't trust Microsoft, but we'll see if there's a bit of a trend there. But gaming definitely has to change because the year 2024, I thought gaming at one time was going to keep improving. Feels like it's stagnated when you're reminiscing about Arkham Origins and thinking, why can't more games be like that? Feels a bit sad given at the time. That did feel kind of like a cash grab. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.